and then I'm going to get the hospital and he'll be sick late. So, but I don't love him. It's Tara. Oh, here she is. Oh, here she is. Yay! I think Rex um, Christensen asked him to let me know. He said it's on his way. He came to say he's a please go ahead and start. Whenever you will, whenever else you want to sit there with you. I'll have Liz sit next to me. We've got some folks that I'll introduce in just a second. Well, we'll open this meeting, and Tara, whenever you'd like, we'll give you the floor. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. I am Terry Geary. Good to see a young person here. Grand Central Senior Center, and I am coming today for a request of $20,000, um, the same as last year for the Senior Center. And to catch you up on our Senior Center, um, we, 2020 was a difficult year, as everybody knows. 2021, our services and our model changed. We didn't have a lot of folks coming to the center, but we documented plenty services. Um, and at the end, we ended up totaling 12,000 services provided. Um, we were, some of that was on the phone, some of that was through, uh, through outreach, and some of it was um, just visits and, and the activities that we did individualized. We very, were blessed with our building, such a large place, space that we can compartmentalize and keep things clean. So we had things sectioned off. And of course, we ran our meals the whole entire time. And through COVID, we saw a triple, a triple number of the meals that we served. People couldn't, um, it wasn't food insecurity at that time. It was just people didn't want to go out. They, they weren't cooking at home. So they came and we served curbside through the back door and delivered the meals out and had a lot of, met a lot of new people that way. That's also how we disseminated information that was given to us. We we emailed information, we mailed information. Our, news, our newsletter reaches um, 286 people in the mail and 350 plus people in, in email. And so those services kept going. We ended up, as I said, with 12,111 I mean, 12, visits. And we were, I was actually very surprised by the time I told her to told her that. Um, our goal is 14,000 visits every year and or visits or, or services provided. Um, this, in, this year, the first quarter, we are already past our 2019 numbers and almost to 2020 numbers. We've had just a phenomenal return of folks. What we didn't have at the start was return of volunteers, which uh, which made it a little difficult. And so I, taking you back, just so you know, the journey that we, we were at, last year we did identify with senior centers and all volunteers being, so many of them being seniors, every center, every nonprofit, was just really strapped to provide extra services with no volunteer base to help with. So we came to you with a proposal for a assistant because we identified that the center's needs needed to be covered by two people. Um, that is still the case this year. So this year we are asking that, um, but we also know that funding, so much of the funding went to COVID, so much of the funding that's now changed with it not being a pandemic and an endemic, those funds are not around. Um, so our budget, we tightened our budget from uh, 2021 of 76,000, we typed, um, tightened it to 65, which hurt a lot. And, um, and we still, now we are seeing volunteers coming back, but we're still seeing a, um, 
a training mission, we're still seeing an even greater need for two for this to be a two person operation. Somebody to run day to day, um, everyday operations in the center. That's where Lynn comes in, and she'll speak in just a second. And um, but then there's also a need for somebody to be a dedicated funder and endowment coordinator and partnership person out in the community, bringing our services to people and bringing people back. Um, there needs to be somebody who is a volunteer generator um, and those we split those things. But to have two professional people in a dedicated way, that costs money. And so we came together and we decided to split one salary and for this year to meet our budget needs and to meet the goals. When you when we saw such a large return of seniors, we had to give them services, but you have to go volunteers and you have to go funding. Um, in our budget, we're still with the county and the city and the other funds that we have. We still have a shortfall originally of 13,000. We've, we've narrowed that down by another five. Um, but the biggest thing is, is that the funding is out there. There are grants for nutrition programs. We have we have a lot of nutrition needs are, as I said, are, are uh, the people that we serve are triple. We serve them in three different ways now. We have inside dining. We have complete curbside hands-off um, delivery. And then we have folks who come in fully masked and who pick up to-go containers, stand across the room, get 15 minutes of visiting in a way that they feel safe. And we're just very blessed to be able to do that. We also are volunteers. We started incorporating our people and the eight Grand Central volunteers became a true partnership with API. We handle all their phone calls. We handle all of their ordering, um, for their meal ordering, their pickup and delivery information. We also help them set up, tear down, and serve. And that partnership allows us to to really serve the folks with um, with food insecurities that we're seeing. Um, I'm part of the, the team now in our transition period from now to June 30th. I'm part of the team that will handle that from the funding, the grant writing, the endowments. We have an endowment that started that is $5,000 a year now that's coming. Um, uh, and there are people out there who are interested in doing it, but it takes a dedicated person. Um, we have to really be purposeful in how we meet the shortfalls in our funding. What we don't have is there aren't a lot of grants or funding opportunities out there to cover operating costs. So what we see is our funding from the county, our funding from the city is, is allowing us to shore up our utilities, the things that keep our doors open to allow us to provide services. And the rest is, is up to us. And we have a good plan to, to get there and we're well on our way. The second person of this dynamic duo is Miss Lynn Beth. She comes to us from Pennsylvania. I'm going to let her introduce herself, tell us a little bit about all her great students. Okay, I'm here in October. Can you hear me with my mask on? Okay, um, I moved here in October from Pennsylvania. Uh, my brother and sister-in-law lived here for 40 years, and so I visited Newton for the last 40 years to visit my family, so I don't feel like I'm coming to an environment that is strange to me. Also, I worked for 10,000 Villages corporate headquarters in Pennsylvania for 23 years, and we had a lot of people from Kansas that came as volunteers. So I got to know a lot of people also from this area. So after doing family caregiving at home um, in Pennsylvania, and um, I moved here um, in October. And after unpacking and getting organized, um, I was looking for volunteer work. Um, and I wanted to do something outside of the Mennonite community since I've been part of a Mennonite community um, in my work environment for 23 years. I kind of wanted to do something a little different. And so my pool buddy back here, <laughs> I met her in the pool at the Y. Um, she said, oh, the senior center is looking for a volunteer. So I said, oh, okay, that sounds like something I would like to do. And so I walked in the door and started volunteering. And it turned into a job opportunity, which I wasn't really looking for, but um, I'm up for the challenge. And um, I'm a senior myself, but I'm a fortunate senior because I have the resources. And I'm, but I have a lot of gifts to give, and I'd like to be able to give that to people that 
are not as fortunate as I am and help them find the resources that they need um, to live a comfortable life in their senior years. And so I've really enjoyed my work, my volunteer work there, and now getting involved in the work part of it. Uh, so I'm looking forward to working with Tara in the next coming months to service our seniors. One thing that Lynn left out as we're all nervous is that she she um, she managed 150 volunteers at, at the same time, and she went from to separate um, uh, places. Um, very good. She was um, in in charge of OSHA regulations, training regulations, volunteers, and such. And she is very good at recruiting. So we have this beautiful gem that walked into our door. And because I don't like to think I'm stupid, I grabbed her as fast as we possibly could because the senior centers are going to benefit from that. And we're, she's willing to put up with me as a partner. And we truly believe. Um, we believed we had to do something, a serious change to address what our issues and to be able to serve. Every day that we have seniors come in, we see vulnerabilities. We see, um, I'm just going to take 10 seconds to say that our seniors are kind of hit them hard in ways for, for we lost some seniors, people got sick, people lost their in, some of their independence because of lingering COVID issues, but we lost some of their social net and, and networking. They lost some mental um, health and, and things were shaky. So then you come into a, all of a sudden you turn on the TV and if you're well situated, you start watching the stock market fall and your retirement shrink. We start going to the store and we see everything going up and recession coming and our gas prices going up. And that's for folks who are well situated in their retirement with fixed income, this is scary. And then we're also talking about seniors historically as a gerontologist, gerontology field, people in their 70s and their 80s were young, but they late 70s, 80s, but they lived through the dirty 30s. I mean, where there were true shortages. And that and at a young age, that's impressionable and it takes something of your psyche. Then they go to World War II where there was rationing. And so again, there's a trigger. They were in their late teens, 20s, and late to late 20s when 1970 hit, the 70s went through. So you come off of, you're just coming out of your home. You're trying to, to learn how to talk to people again. You're trying to remember how to drive. These are things that people tell me. You want to visit, and then this, this um, world turns crazy, turvy, and, and upside down. But, and so our seniors, people that you wouldn't realize are, sh are just shaky in, in many aspects of their lives. Then you talk food in shortages. And we've had, as I spoke before to the county, county commissioners, we're having people come in that if that are doubling the number of applications for food. If they would all come in at once, we would fill our building. And I mean, we could have upwards of 70 people in. And they are quite there, but they're they're coming in once or twice, or they're coming in and this gets their resources are shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. And many of you don't know who who aren't in the senior business. Last in the last two years, Medicare has changed their their drug prescription drastically. So now many drugs that were covered by Medicare are considered over counter. You know, things like diabetic eye drops that can be forty or fifty dollars a piece. Um, our need survey assessment survey told us three years ago already that. That seniors are making choices between dental and vision and and other health services they chose not to they sh chose to cancel wellness visits because of affording um travel or, or whatever so so now it is important for us to figure out a way how to how to co continue to serve and to be a safety net and these services could all be parceled out but a central place when you talk about socialization, talk about psychology, a comfort place to find home and to get help and to trust, that, that's necessary. Um, but I don't want you to hear any more from me as much as I like to talk. What I wanna do is introduce some seniors who you can hear from them. I'd love you to ask them questions about what they're talking about. Um, so I have 
Jeannie Fleming, and I'm going to explain why why I wanted them to come. Jeannie Fleming worked at the county in, in transportation for many years. She also sat on our advisory council for the camp county funding. So she is intimately aware of the senior center's funding needs and our activity levels. So and she's also part of our choir and, and a member of our center. Um, that is a big thing for us. So she's seen a lot of transitioning. We have another gene because if you have one, you should always have two. And um, we always are pair of genes. Right? <laughs> and Jean was um, a former um, assistant director at the center. She saw the transition from Newton Area Senior Center to Grand Central. She's seen the transition in who we serve, how we serve, how the numbers work, and is a vital volunteer for us now. Um, helps us with program. I mean, we would not. There, we had a handful of, of volunteers in 2020 and 2021, and she was one that helped us literally keep it open. Um, and then I have Mr. Paul um, and it, Paul Harmon. Sorry, Harms, and he um, is a retired um, professor from Bethel College. Um, he uh, lost his wife and found the center as a way to a new place to go and, uh, and to have some great conversation. Mm -hmm. If you ever want a really good conversation, come have lunch with us because wicked funny and highly intelligent people coming from all over the, the place. So if you have questions for me or Lynn, welcome. But if you also have questions you want to hear from seniors themselves, what the Senior Center means, they're here for you as well. Oh. Bob. Oh, I'm so sorry, Bob. But Bob is our president of our board. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, but I guess what it comes down to, you just saw in action that seniors are the most important people in the room to me, and these are the people we take care of. And Bob, I wouldn't be anywhere without him, without him helping help him get through this. Um, if if you have questions, that's great. If not, I'll ask him myself. So what made you go? Monday through Friday, um, as always. Um, the pool players come usually at 8 o'clock, um, and the doors open, and we have a volunteer that comes at that time. And we're there till 3, unless it is a card game day, and we may be there till whenever everybody decides to quit. We have um, evenings, um, evenings activities scheduled, and we also have activities on some Saturdays. And that has been that way. During the pandemic, we opened for activities that were scheduled so that we could control the flow, but we, we opened the very day that the, the uh, um, governor said we could, and, um, and we offered, we brought in foot clinics and other things that couldn't happen in other places to keep, um, we had to do some special tap dancing to do that with a safety plan and such. But we made sure that seniors got their services and because they used to go the foot clinics would go to the nursing homes and so what is your on, on schedule a can you uh, detail what other what those funds are how much is on point two the number is 25 sorry the same uh, our accountant um, lumps lumps some things together instead of in in our budgeting he, he summarizes so in other could be anything from from special payments that are made uh, for special classes special craft classes it could be um, donations that people make um, at pop rocks and um, any of our regular everyday events that somebody comes to somebody will toss in an extra ten dollars go buy pop um, so it is you also also other includes things like um, our Amazon smile account when people buy our Kroger um, our Kroger accounts when people buy groceries and choose us to be donated to um, it can it also includes um, American Legion um, donates um, part of their for them to have slot machines in their in their building they have to donate 10 percent of those proceedings and we're one of the lucky people who were former, um, recipients of that and every now we have some people who do um, a distribution out of their four or out of their 401ks or their IRAs and we'll get like a $20 check 
a monthly, some will do it quarterly. The $5,000 that we get as an endowment, um, we are looking to breaking that out to give us more detail. But when our accounting, our, um, all of those systems are volunteers. And so uh, they, uh, we're just happy to have them um, come and, and do payroll and all those things. I circled the 95,000 on that same 22 proposed because that's when we were looking at bringing a part-time person when we talked last. That's what our budget would be. And to go down to $65,000 to cut $30,000 we, and still keep full services to be back where we were. Um, we just want to demonstrate. I want to remind you when I, the very first time I met you, we had had twenty five thousand was the previous year, and and I asked for I asked for ten, um, and, and then um, then we got sixteen the next year, and and then the year after that I asked for twenty, which is where we're now now. I've never brought us back up to the twenty five that we were getting before, because I looked you very seriously in the eye and understand money is tight, services have to it has to stretch. And so I only asked for what I really think we could need and we'll do our part to tighten our belt like you guys are to yours. And you can take that back to the people you serve. Um, and we also uh, are, are very aware that you're looking at cost per service. So if you do 15, 14,000 services um, in the center to 20,000, it comes to $1.43 service offered that includes meals so uh we have a lot of work to do a lot of people to take care of and i just want to be partner with the with the city to do that we've got six or seven minutes left and Chair, the, yes sir. The, the paid people that pay the 25 dollars a month member or 25 dollars a year membership um is there about 72 of them um, right now there's 62 of them, but a membership is, we need to be very clear. I'm glad you brought that up, Clint. That was a, a, a thank you. Um, we are not the same business model as the rec center or the Y. Their membership is is such that, um, help me out with the figures. The membership of the Y is 20, 23, $25 somewhere, you know, like depending on whether you have like your insurance. Or right. yeah. um, and then the rec center is 26. And you have to pay extra for classes. Yeah. So they they price theirs out that's a month. Ours is 25 or 30 dollars a year. And so it comes to two dollars and sixty cents a month. If somebody comes and needs our service, we don't require payment. I um, mean it's more dues for people who want to help us um have frills to our programs. Um our additional programs, if we bring in an, a special instructor like Tai Chi, when we brought him in for 30 different people to come, um, his class is $110 a, a person. I wrote a grant for that. Um, when we have occasionally a craft class, you're going to cover, but but our center is just to, for a place for people to come and get services. We are looking at some different structures to for people to be sustaining members to to underwrite the services that we're asking you to help for. That is a new plan coming forward. And now that I have a partner, I can take time to flesh that out and present it to the to the group. So so and what I get, I guess what I'm getting at is. Um, um, 14,000 visits, there's not 14,000 people, there's 14,000 bodies, right, you know, on any given day, but so how many more other than over, six, obviously it's more than 62 because not everybody's paying the $25 membership, so at the end of the year, like for 20, with that example, let's pretend COVID never happened, 2021, um, how many people, or 2019, whatever was the last normal year, like how many people were, Above and beyond the 62 people that paid membership, how many more people, not visits, how many more people were actually coming at the end of the year? Do you guys keep track of I do. If, um, if Jim Bob comes and he, but he's not a member, but he comes sorry? 227 times throughout the year, Jim Bob counts as one. How many more of those Jim Bobs are there? Um, I believe it is. And if anybody's name is Jim Bob, my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the um, fourth quarter, at the end of the fourth quarter, we had um, 268 people who come in. But if you go to the rec center and you've got folks who come in. I, I understand, yeah, 268 right. is good. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, but those folks also, that's 268 people who signed in. 
with us being located right between um, Agape and um, New Jerusalem, and this is the end of the line for people who get put on a bus from Topeka. Um, we see indigent folks come in more and more this past summer um, to now, and they they no longer can be served at the shelters because the shelters require well some of them can't they choose not to be served because the shelters require a vaccination and so, so that's they, if they're going to be residents there correct yeah, but, so they can still get services at salvation army or at new jerusalem and, and i do i do just want to point out a little bit too that we do have quite a few nonprofit services that do service food so i mean i wonder sometimes keeping the main thing the main thing is a good thing so I'm just pointing out that there are Agape, New Jerusalem, and Salvation okay, Best Seeking so, without. So your so vaccines. your neighbor who has um, who worked their whole life and and has dignity and pride, and they want to come and visit in, in a senior center, they don't necessarily want to go to a shelter to to have lunch and have a visit. There, um, just because there are options doesn't mean there are options that they. Oh don't no, need. I'm not saying that. I'm just no, I'm just saying that. I mean, there's, I'm saying are, you guys are a senior center, not a food pantry, so I was. But we are. We we have API friendship meals that is strictly six okay. year above. It is. I disagree on that. That's okay. Right. Yeah, that's okay. It comes from the older Americans Act money. So where do you say your membership? Well, I, I, I'm a senior citizen now. I, I would admit that, <laughs> you know, to, to just anybody, but. But since I'm in good company, I don't, I don't mind doing that. <clears throat> you know, I, I know my friends I run around with that are my age, that are boomers, um, senior sitters just don't excite me right now. I'd really rather go to a brewery or something and and have a beer and, 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 and fellowship that way. Uh, what, what do you see the future of senior? I'm gonna I'm gonna let the seniors answer. I mean, I'm I, I, fifty. Honestly, I'm, I'm interested. Yeah. I'd, I'd be happy to. For, yeah. I don't get the idea that we are all in need. We're all needy. We're not. Many of us are independent, have enough income to survive well. Mm -hmm. But there are activities and things that we do that we can't get at home alone. Uh, I just jotted down. Look, I'm an eleven year member of the senior center. Volunteered there many in years. Early huh? You must have joined in your I did in my mid 50s. <laughs> I was able to retire early, yes. Um, but here's some of the things I participated in. I'm in the senior choir. We have 20 to 25 members that are there every week to practice. Not all of them are members, probably not all of them even get on the member of the list. We go out to various senior centers all around, not just in Harvey County, in other counties, we are Newton ambassadors. We've sung at Botanica. We sung an honor flight. Mm -hmm. So we are out there and out there, and that's the service they're not gonna get anywhere else. You're not gonna get a senior choir. It's not a church choir, but we do sing sacred music. But a senior choir. We have a woman there who just lost her husband not too long ago, and that's the thing that's brought her back out of it. We have lunch. I don't need to get my lunch here, but I go for the conversation and the socialization. Um, we have a woman there who's new to town and lunches have got her started in her activities down at the senior center. She's 84, moved to Newton last summer, and now she's out and about. Um, I play pool. The guys don't let me win, but I play. <laughs> And they are Newton ambassadors. With their league, every year they go to all the area senior centers, Salina, Hutchinson, McPherson, and they shoot in their tournaments. So they are Newton ambassadors. And they are loyal. They are there every day. Rain, shine, snow. Doesn't matter. Um, I got the potluck. The potluck draws in people who I know are not members, but we have a diverse group. It's not a church potluck. It's not an organizational potluck. It's people from every walk of life. We sometimes have entertainment, <laughs> sometimes better than others. <laughs> um, and I think they're of, of a young woman, not a young woman, but a woman who has cared for her mother until her mother died, and now she has no socialization. So that potluck is one place where she can socialize. Um, 
I play games in the afternoon. I love to play games. <laughs> sometimes I win, sometimes Bob wins. <laughs> but there are rules. <laughs> and I think uh, just chatting and bringing in occasionally people come in for games and then we don't see them for a while and then they come back. We play dominoes, we play cards, we play all sorts of games. And I go for yoga three times a week there. Um, it's an exercise program that you don't have to pay for. It's non-competitive. You do as much as you can, as you comfortably can, and you don't have to be forced by a leader to urge you on. You just do what you're comfortable with and then go. But those are some of the things I participate in. I also volunteer one day a week at the desk. And I think the people who come in there, and I don't want you to get the idea that we're all poor and needy, but we are all searching for somewhere to go. Senior centers, Presbyterian Manor, Kansas Christian, Asbury, and Bethel all have their own activity programs, but their residents don't pay taxes because they don't pay property tax there. We have nowhere to go, but we pay taxes. So you need a center where some activities can be planned for those who do pay their taxes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And my next, yes, ma'am. Okay. I'll try to be as brief as possible. I made just a couple of uh, copies of things if you want to just pass them down. I'll keep on looking, but I thought were important. Uh, maybe in these six categories that I, I know this is what happens at the center because I participate in it. And we give out information, we have fitness, meals, services, socialization, and volunteer work. And I've been a volunteer in a lot of different places, but I am now a volunteer at the senior center. I serve lunches at noon and I enjoy it, and you would be amazed about the conversation that comes in. This lady Jean was talking about that was new here, she's from Alaska. So she gives us a whole different viewpoint of what life is like for her, but I really enjoy it, and um, now that I am a senior, I see the needs a little differently. And uh, if you're alone, or if you have only a spouse and no kids around, uh, you can't do everything that you used to do, and you don't want to, <laughs> but here's a place for you to go. So what I'm hoping is that you can see the needs that we have and also want to be, see how the Senior Center takes care of a lot of them and that you would want to help us do that. So thank you. Under socialization, I yeah. assume pool players is pool players. Oh, it is. Excuse me. So you do, you have SHIC counseling room at the Senior Center as well as the court Yes. House? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Ah, okay. But Which was a, really important the last two years. Well, that's a real important service to seniors, yeah. especially at that 65. And since we went back, we worked in the county. Yeah, since she retired, she did a lot of that. And mm -hmm. so we're needing more and more people. I was going to take that training a year ago, but then that didn't work. Our grandson came to stay with us. Yeah. And, and so I, I wanted to take that training, though, because that's the kind of work I do at, at work anyway. So I find that to be very interesting. Well, I think the Senior Center is a good um, good sign for, you know, when people come in, they find these things and they like it, and people are friendly, and that's what we're known for. So thank you. Thank you. The name is just complicated. Any other questions from the commissioners, or are you presenting? Uh, oh, all right, we're well, all ears. Where is yours? I'm Paul Barnes. I live in Kipling Chapel. I'm a widower now. I'm also not very young. Uh, I just mentioned a few things that uh, uh, intersection between my life and uh, the senior center. Initially, I got started 
really not with the senior senate, but helping to fund the senior senate about 20 years ago, putting inserts into the cans. I uh, did that for 10 or 12 years. We used to put all the inserts into the cans and can of course had their own press. Later was the first one. <laughs> And we bought the Newton, put inserts in on the camps and place the senior center, depending on a number of newspapers and a number of inserts. We did that about three times a week. So there are quite a few of those people who volunteer. Actually, that's how I got to know the senior center. Eight at the senior center, when we didn't get done by us, a lot of calls to the senior center. But anyway, that's my initial start there. I grew up in the extreme eastern part of the county. I'm old enough to have gone to a one of them grade school for my elementary school. So I usually, my wife and I use the senior center a little bit primarily for special activities like evening activities and so on. But uh, I've used it now for a while, quite a while after she's died, especially for the API for the meals and so on. I think it's especially helpful for people I'll say roughly my age, who come here and not necessarily go to Chicken Buffalo or one of the one of the homes like that and have uh, either they or their spouse aren't, aren't doing real well physically and so on. To come for uh, a person who's taken care of, a person who has the physical ability, often comes, eats, socializes, and gets another meal and takes it home. And I think that's a, that's a very good thing. And we have some of those that come every day. And I, I'd like to just indicate I think that's a very good thing for the center. And also the other things um, that they do, the special events, I think are very good. And some of the people actually from Presbyterian Manor and uh, We've had some from Chittenden Bethel. They'll come and especially use the API the meals and eat and have a good time, socialize with uh, different people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For your time. Did you have any final questions for me? I just will say that uh, I did appreciate the service at the senior center. Um, we, my grandson held his graduation event there, and it was it was just I've 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 been there before years ago when we first moved here, and I can remember somewhat in the, in the in the volunteer process and helping back in the kitchen and all of that that. It is much more organized, much more that now than what I remember it being roughly 10, 12 years. I saw a lot of improvement in organization supplies. Just, I can't say enough about how nicely it was laid out and, and just serving our family. Um, it's, a, it's a nice place to have events, and I don't know how much of that you do, but if you're bringing in any kind of rental income that way, that's... I've got another one in two weeks. That's, that also is included in the other category. Okay. So um, we... I just wanted to say one more thing. Being a senior myself and have been a good stewardship of my money for my entire working life has afforded me the ability to not be scared of the fact that I won't have enough money to live for the rest of my life, but also living through what we're living through now with the stock market is quickly eroding what the finance people told me in my 30s and 40s was going to last me till I was in my 80s. But there are seniors out there that were not as fortunate as I am for some of the other seniors that are in the room, um, that they have found that the stock market that they thought has a work. And so they come to us for help to find the resources to learn how to get better prices on prescription drugs, better 
um, legal, legal services that they don't have to pay $200. They can come and legal aid comes in and helps those kind of things. Those, those little bits of money help them go a little bit further all the time. They might have those services other places in Newton, but they come and they ask the questions. And if we don't know the answers, we'll find it out for them. And so I think that's a that could be that's a service that we provide that may not be provided in other areas. Mm -hmm. So we have to just think about the fact that we don't know what life is going to bring to any of us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want a break? I can use the restroom and so let's maybe just write. Is that okay? Absolutely. We're going to rush this to the break. Okay, we'll use the restroom. We need a turn.